you were not in the original punk scene, were you? You know, I, I arrived a little late to the punk scene, but it was the punk scene in Detroit and Ann Arbor. Detroit, okay. So by the time I got to, by the time I got to San Francisco, uh, Mabuhe was nothing but a legend, which always inspired my curiosity, which is one of the things that fed into this. But really, what was driving the initial work on this film was I wanted to do a film about some of my buddies from a similar sort of a setting around Detroit. And I realized that living in San Francisco, I was just never going to pull that off. So I ended up, well, let's find something a little closer to home. And, that's when Kathleen Landino and Michael Reed appeared and said, we're about to have this homecoming, 2013. And uh, I don't know if it was the biggest mistake of my life or the best. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, well, let's, let's, sh let's shoot some footage and see what happens. So. Well, it's only been three years, so. Uh, it's six. actually <laughs> six years? Well, I, 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 I had shot a little bit of the, the earliest footage that I shot for this film was the footage that you saw of Flipper, which was 2012. In February, it'll be six years, six beautiful years. We'll film take a long time. But they thank do. you for yeah. sticking yeah. with it. I, I promise myself it'll be done before six years more, so. <laughs> That we're hoping. Yes. We're hoping. <laughs> final cut. Final, final cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mia, how is it for you to see this? Um, does, it, <laughs> does it feel all true? Do you think your story is told uh, in a complete way, or not complete way, obviously, because you're still going and you making know, music? I love this movie so much because I get to see all my old friends when we were all young together. And it's a, a super sweet thing, and I'm really grateful to Timmy for, you know, sh showing that so we, you know, we can all see it. Um, as far as my own story, it's it's hard to be objective. <laughs> you know? But um, I mean, you know, it was a long time ago, and uh, it's interesting. I I'm glad I learned how to sing since then. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah. And you perform. Um, Quite often, right? Yeah, I, I actually just changed that recently because I was playing, I was busking at um, the farmers markets mostly, and making a living. But if you do that for a living, you have to do it a lot. And I ended up, I, I have a pinched nerve now. Oh, <laughs> so I'm not playing guitar right now. So your trip that you just came back from was music related or not? Um, it, you know, we did something that is kind of, it's kind of, we did kind of a bucket list thing and that we just, uh, we mastered an album that Abby wrote. Ah. So it was oh, pretty awesome. cool. <laughs> wow. um, so that was, that was super exciting and I'm glad we did it and it made it sound good. <laughs> <laughs> so. I bet. Wow, that's a dream come true. Yeah. Um, we're gonna take questions. Uh, I don't know if we organized somebody with a microphone. I don't think we did. So if you have a question, you just have to shout it out. Jim, what do you want to do with the film that hasn't been done yet? You know, I'm always seeking archival footage, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to put a little more archival footage in, because I think it's one of the things that, as, as I've told people, who participated in the film, everybody gets to be young for at least a few frames in the film. <laughs> and I want to get some ar archival footage more of showing people performing younger to contrast. I think it works really nicely with the cases where I do have that. So that's, that's the main focus. There's a couple other interviews I wouldn't mind doing, but I'm going to try and resist the urge. You know, there's, always, there's always somebody where I, I, oh, I'd really like to hear from this person or that person. And I'm trying to, trying to quell that. But. <laughs> Any other questions here? You guys perform still, right? Uh, the Avengers, or yeah. So uh, and she does too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, uh, here and in Europe and in other places, nowadays, do you find some of the spirit, the creativity, or just the aesthetics or of what punk used to be? You mean when we're performing or the audience? No, the, all, all of it. All of it. Yeah, in the, the scenes. I think, um, yeah, the Avengers have been performing for the last, I don't know, 15 years in a re reformatted version with a younger drummer and a younger bass player. And we've toured all over Europe and, um, and the US. And some places have really, really vibrant scenes. And other places, it's people who are kind of like, that remember it from the old days. I want to see it again. But um, I would say in San Francisco, 
when we play Gilman Street, for instance, there's a huge scene there, and it's quite vibrant, and it continues. Um, so it just depends on the location. But, but people, when I'm performing anyway, for me, it's, I feel the same as I did when I was 19. I've just, the songs, the music carries you, and it carries you to that moment of anger. I thought it was interesting what uh, Celia was saying about anger now is that she doesn't have to live it. She can just present it, but it doesn't have to live inside her anymore. And I feel that same way. I don't walk around being super angry, but when I get on stage with the Avengers, it's, you know, the songs and the words and are still there, and I'm still angry about a lot of shit that happens in the world. But um, uh, I think we should be. I think that's one of the things punk rock and, and I would like to point out that all of the interviews in the film, including the ones where everybody said, what we, we really need punk rock now, were done before the last presidential election. So <laughs> you, you make your own decision about whether it's needed even more now. So. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yes? Is this your first film? And uh, if so, did you have a big learning curve and how to edit it? Uh, you know, it's my second film. The first one was five minutes long and involved plastic army men experiencing existential <laughs> angst. That, that, one, that one is almost finished as well. Uh, um, I had a really big learning curve, but I had a really great crew. I think, you know, one of the things that's happened over the last couple of years and part of uh, what's impacting my creative process is my crew is escaping. Uh, I think there's only one, is Ryan the only, is anybody besides Ryan? Ryan that did all the sound is lurking around here somewhere. Raise your hand, Ryan, embarrass yourself. Ryan, Ryan, but, but for instance, Noah that did all the camera work with me, he's gone off to study cinematography in Europe and uh, there are many cast of dozens of people that did various work. They helped me get through the learning curve. So I, um, I, I learned a lot along the way. I, I, I'm still the slowest editor in the world, but. Uh, but it was, uh, this film was sort of a developing process for me, so. The most thoughtful editor in the world. Mindy. <laughs> uh, I just want to say that I think your film is wonderful, and you finally got it together uh, in the terms of editing, you know, the process uh, where the uh, previous cuts were like two separate films. Mm -hmm. And I think you did a marvelous job of integration, so. Good speed for you. I'd like to recognize Mindy, Mindy Bogdan, who did the Louder, Faster, Shorter films that you saw as part of what we saw there. And there's two people whose approval are the highest on my list. The first is Mia, and Mindy's second. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions out there? Yes, Bobby. Is this uh, a different cut from the one I saw at the Waxing? It is. It is. Marginally. Marginally. I have this pesky day job now. Very distracting. Do not get a day job if you want to make a film. <laughs> um, and uh, it's really slowed down the process, but I, I keep chipping away at things and there's, a, there's things that are progressing with it, but it's not nearly as slow as it, not nearly as fast as it had been in the past. So. Are, are you happy with it? Happy. Such a... Happiness has not quite yet been achieved. We're getting close, though. <laughs> we have a question here. Yeah. Um, what kind of festivals, film festivals, do you plan to contribute? The ones that haven't rejected it already. Those, those are the ones I'm trying to go to. And uh, let me tell you, there have been a few. So I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to sort out the life path of this film. I was interacting with somebody recently, and they said, you know, this film is very good. I don't know if it'll be interesting to people outside of San Francisco. All that happens is they got older. And I was like, well, actually, that's kind of maybe the point of the film. But, uh, but I, I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know what the life cycle of the film is. I'm still trying to figure that out. That's why, perhaps why I continue editing obsessively. <laughs> Compulsively. I think that's what I liked about the film. That everybody's growing older and it has that different perspective about it. They they are able to understand why why they did it when they were younger and they have that, that perspective. You know, this is something that came out when I was at the um shooting the original stuff at the punk homecoming events that uh, Punk Rock Sewing Circle put on. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want the same scene that was in the Mab when you're in your 60s, you know? It's, although, although there was, the, 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 
the case where I was shooting the flipper footage at, at the new parish in Oakland, um, I had my crew that are all in their 20s, maybe 30s at the oldest, and they're all setting up and they're watching and the crowd's assembling and the crowd is, there's flipper on stage and the crowd is approximately age equivalent to flipper. And my crew is looking and they're seeing the crowd starting to move like this and they said, one of the guys said to me, they're not gonna do what I think they're gonna do, are they? <laughs> and they did, and they did. And no one, no one was seriously hurt, but it was one of those things where there's also a place for a little calmer, slower, more geriatric <laughs> punk rock. And, uh... <laughs> Any other questions? In the back. When are you going to show the film again? <sighs> this, is, this is kind of an open question. It depends on some of that archival footage. If, if some of the things that I'm working on with that work out, I'll probably be editing for another three, four months. Then there'll be a period of, of festival rejections, followed by <laughs> crying, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. And then uh, after that, we'll probably screen it again. Maybe in time, maybe if you do another series, no, I'll be ready. Right. Yes, well, we're going to have to have another uh, SF Punk I don't film know. series at the library. It's been super yeah. popular, so well, you have a goal there. Something like to shoot for. <laughs> yeah. In the back here. Yes, uh, so what about light pumps on uh, till the tubes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What about it? What about it? White punks on up the tubes. Well, what did that have to say about uh, this whole scenario? I think that was before punk. Yeah. Yes, yes. The tubes did not associate themselves with the San Francisco punk scene. Um, I remember they did come to the Mabuhay ones. <laughs> there was this little scene. I, <laughs> A little funny little story to tell about the tubes. Yeah. Uh, Blondie was in town and playing a show, and I went to see Blondie play, and um, they got invited to the tubes warehouse, which was south of Market, which was like a big two-story affair, and <laughs> David Bowie was playing in Iggy Pop's band, and they had just played the same show with Blondie. So inside the club, were, I mean, inside the party was David Bowie, and Deborah Harry and Iggy Pop and Chris Stein, but the guys from Blondie, the, the rhythm section and guitarists, were hanging out with the Avengers. We were driving around town, so we got there late. And when we got there, um, we walked up to the door, and the people said, well, you know, who the fuck are you? And we said, uh, they said, well, we're in Blondie, and they said, Blondie's already here. <laughs> so, um, so Jimmy Destry uh, of Blondie kicked in the doors of their, they had glass doors and he kicked their glass door and it shattered, this huge glass door. And then the guy, you know, some of the tubes came out and they're huge, even without their platform shoes, they're kind of <laughs> gigantic. <laughs> they came out, we were all kind of running after the door shattered, we were all running back to the car and grabbed Jimmy Destry around the neck and just choking him and he's not very tall, so he was like, his feet were going off the ground. And I just went up there and I bit that tube's arm. <laughs> bit him on the arm until he let go. And then we all scurried off and went, I don't know, to a bar or something. But um, apparently his arm got swollen up and the, then the tubes were cursing the Avengers and they actually showed up at the Mubuhe one time when we were playing and I was passed a cocktail napkin and it said, um, you know, we'll get our revenge or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I did actually get bit by another human being sometime after that, but I don't think they actually were doing it for the tubes. Yeah. But the, <laughs> to get back be. to my point, the tubes were a little bit before, they were more part of the glam rock thing, and yeah. um, the fact they used the word punk, white punks on dope, I don't think mm. really influenced the punk scene in San Francisco. I could be wrong, anybody? Yeah. Have another? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got time for one or two more questions. Irene, dogmatic. Oh. I thought the film seemed a little bit nostalgic. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I was part of the scene, right? I don't feel like I'm a part of anything right now. I don't feel like I'm an anarchist. I'm an artist. And where I live is the world. 
So I don't know how this fits with what I've watched, but I found it very interesting, but I found it rather sad in a way, watching the people who die, all the stuff that's gone down. I don't know. Do you think that? It's good that you've made this, but I don't know what to think of it. Hmm. Hmm. Do, have, has, have other people said that they felt, you know, like, a film about punk shouldn't be this sad or well, I think, I, I think it does I think it does take a different tone than the typical film about it's sort of t I, there's there's a typical music documentary they rocked really hard then something bad happened and then they came back and rocked really hard again and that you know there's a little bit of that going on in this what's that that's not really exactly what I meant I just meant like there's something about it I mean it's beautiful what you've done is great but I mean, There I am, too. <laughs> that seem to me to be very nostalgic. And I have difficulty with nostalgia. Yeah. Because I find it to be a part of history. You know, when I was working, starting the early stages of this film, I thought this film is going to be a lot of looking back, lost youth, and a little bit of decrying of lost youth. And there's certainly an aspect of that to a lot of what people's story was. was. You know, when Patrick says, I'm okay not being a rock star right now, right now. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, you know, it, something's gone there type thing. I but maybe I never really believed I was going to be a rock star. Yeah. I got into it more because it was a place for me to put writings that I was doing. Yeah. I've gotten into other stuff, but I never really believed that I was going to be a rock star. I mean, I still write songs occasionally, but I don't necessarily think of myself as being a punk. Well, I, I, I will say that the, there's something came out for me in the experience, which was that people had found their own place, their own at their at their age, at their place in life, and there was one. There's a line that somebody gave me, and I, I know I know from the reaction a lot of people had here when Cecilia came on that a lot of people are aware that we lost Cecilia Kuhn from Frightwig last last year. I think that's really sad. Yeah, but, it is sad, but they. It is. But they did happen, and. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. Maybe I've gotten old. Every. Yeah, yeah but if, if I, let me just conclude that thought by saying, you know, I I came into it with the feeling that people were going to be talking about their lost youth, and there was a moment where I was interviewing Cecilia, and she said, something that shocked me. I could have fallen off my chair. She said. I'm so glad I'm not young. And I did not end up using that in the film just because it, was, it didn't fit in with what, what I was trying to put together. But it was one of those things where it's like, okay, what I thought her perspective and the perspective was going to be, it's not. It's, everybody's got their own, and she certainly had her own perspective on that, which I, you know, I feel happy with what I captured with her, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to put down on Okay. I mean, part of it too probably comes from the fact that I did a lot of substitute teaching over the years at the various school districts. So I've been watching all of the different groups of kids who came out, you know, yeah. got into different scenes. So this was one of them. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And we divided into groups according to the class, the race, etc. And it, it changed my perspective on it too, sir. Um, we've got time for one more question. This this gentleman here. I just like to thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you. And it's not. You know, it's, it, it is history, and a lot of people don't understand what happened here during this year. It was very tumultuous. Well, it's good for that. Yep. It's good yeah. history. What was happening, and uh, you know. We, and yeah, I, I just want to thank you for documenting that because it easily could have gotten lost. And you know, I know how hard it is to document. There wasn't, you know, the act that everybody wasn't walking around with video cameras and iPhones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So I just like to thank you because yes, it was an important time, and not too many people know about it. Yeah. We have. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Do we, do we have a minute? Can I, can I say something? Do we, have, do we have a minute? Yeah. You know, you know to, to riff on what you're saying there, I was in this very room for an event that was put on by the Punk Rock Sewing Circle and Penelope uh, about 2015, 
where it was a panel of people, including Veo and Mickey from Creep, and they were talking about the doc documenting of the era, and Michael Stewart Foley said, you know, it's up to people to bring their history to the record. You don't leave the writing of history to the people who go through life keeping archives of their personal papers and that sort of thing. It's up to us as punk punks and the people that participated in the scene to document that scene, otherwise it will be forgotten, or it'll be over steamrolled by that other perspective. And that other perspective is usually people who had more money, more control, all of those things. And so for me, the opportunity to document this, and I think something anybody gets a chance should do, is document what we did experience, even though this is for me a little distant from my personal experience. It's really important to put it in the record, and I'm happy to do that with this. So I thank you for that. That is going to be it for us because we do, the library is closing at 8 o'clock. But I just want to remind everybody that you can come up to the sixth floor and look at what we've got in the punk archive with your own eyes and hands carefully. And um, anyone who has things that they think should be in the punk archive, please contact me. My, uh, that We have a flyer up there about how to contact us and what we're interested in getting. And thank you all for coming to the punk film series. It's been super fun. We're going to do it again. Thanks. <laughs>